we have a loop and a changing electric flux going through that loop and we're asked to find the magnetic field at a couple of different distances now in order to do that we need to use ampere maxwell's laws which is going to say b dotted with ds equals um in this case we're going to ignore uh the mu naught i enclosed portion because there's no current but we do have the e naught uh, derivative of uh, the flux happening. Because the flux is changing over time, we know that we can use this portion. And this side of the equation, so first of all, this is going to go away, but this side of the equation is uh, a little bit interesting because it's actually going to be more like b times the length of the loop that you're trying to make with that. And on the other side, we're just gonna solve it. So mu naught, uh, e naught, and then um, the derivative of this thing is just gonna be um, four, uh, four millivolts, kind of. This is going to be if we're enclosing the entire circle. And in this particular case, we are. So, because look, the radius is like way out here. So we are enclosing the entire thing here. So we're gonna use 100% of the enot thickness. This, this thing is 100%. If it's 100% of the flux, then it's gonna be four millivolts, right? So since we're using the full circle, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go over here to this thing and try to solve this. What's the length if we're out here? The length is the circumference, so it's 2 pi r, and r is going to be 7.5 centimeters. And then we have the b. And then over here, we have the mu naught, you know, 4 millivolts. So now we could try to solve this, because we'll just get that b equals uh, all this stuff. So you can use the calculator here. So mu naught is going to be 4 pi or 4 to the negative 7. And since there's a pi on this side, we're just going to get rid of the pi's. On the bottom, though, we would have 2 times um, 7.5 because we're going to have to divide this and put it on the other side. And then we're going to multiply the top side by the e naught thing, which is 8.85. And then we'll have a 4 millivolts per second thing. So the answer to this one is going to be 9.44 e to the negative 20 tesla on this side because again we've used the entire area and we've checked that using the large length out here because you see how there's two different uh, measurements but anyway um let's go to this one r is 1.5 centimeters so that means that we're going to be more like in here somewhere which means that the length of this loop on the outside on this side is gonna be smaller. So we'll basically have B and then two pi times 1.5 centimeters. And on the other side, uh, we're just gonna use this, but it's no longer 100% of the flux. So instead of using four, we have to do the uh, ratios. So we're gonna basically say the electric flux is really equal to the four millivolts thing times um, on the top we'd have pi r squared that's the smaller one and on the bottom we'd have the pi r squared that's the bigger one that's the full length so in order to solve that we'll basically just say four millivolts times and we're going to get rid of these pi's but the top side is going to be the smaller r which is the 1.5 1.5 to the negative two squared and on the bottom we have the 2.5 negative 2 squared so that way the partial flux that we have is really more like 9 over 6 to 50. okay so that's what we're going to use right over here 9 over 6 to 50. and uh, so now we should be able to solve this because we'll multiply that times uh the u naught which is an e naught thing epsilon naught negative 12 times a mu naught 4 e to the negative 7 
we're going to get rid of the pi on that side, but we're also going to divide this by 2 times 1.5 and a minus 2 there. So on this side, on the smaller one, we would get 1.7 uh, e to the negative 19 Tesla. So there we go.